Well, 69 years ago this month, the American version of the Mafia was born in another New Jersey city. It's a fascinating but little-known chapter of New Jersey history that took place in Atlantic City. Tonight, producers Tim Snollery and correspondent Michael Aaron explain how organized crime got organized. Come on, stick them up. Lock that door. Where's Arnie? In the office? By the early 1930s, Hollywood was enthralled by gangsters, and Americans in the throes of the Depression were also fascinated by mobsters. Topping the list was America's most notorious bootlegger and hoodlum, Al Capone. But New Jersey had its own version of Al Capone, his name, Abner Longy Zwillman. Born and raised in Newark, Zwillman worked his way up from pushcart fruit peddler to one of America's most powerful bootleggers. At one point during Prohibition, Zwillman was said to control nearly 40% of all the illegal booze coming into the United States. But the FBI was on to Zwillman and compiled this thousand-page dossier on his activities. And those activities included organizing, with the help of South Jersey political boss Enoch Nucky Johnson, the first ever convention of American mobsters. It took place in Atlantic City in May of 1929. They were killing each other off, but left and right. And Longy had the idea of calling a meeting in Atlantic City full of big family heads. Mark Stewart spent 50 years as a newspaper man in New York and New Jersey, and in 1985, he wrote a book about New Jersey's notorious but little-known gangster. So why choose Atlantic City for the meeting? That decision rested with Zwillman's friend and crime associate, Meyer Lansky, who just happened to be in Atlantic City on his honeymoon. He was a very cheapskate. Longy and Meyer Lansky and Lucky Luciano got together and decided, let's have a meeting in Atlantic City, because that's where Meyer was. He didn't want to move. He said, I paid for the room for a week, and I'm staying right here. There were plenty of issues for the conventioneers to discuss. They were all feeling heat from the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, when Capone gunmen slaughtered six members and an associate of Bugs Moran's crew in a Chicago warehouse. All over the nation, gangs were hijacking one another's booze trucks, and the body count was rising. So it was decided that America should be sliced up into crime territories to try to stop the bloodshed. They divided up the whole United States into districts. Nobody was allowed to step into the other guy's territory. So basically, organized crime got organized here in, the, New, in Atlantic City. In New Jersey. In New Jersey. The gathering was a rogues gallery of racketeers. From Cleveland, there was Mo Dallitz. From Boston, King Solomon. Philadelphia sent Niggy Rosen and Waxy Gordon. From Chicago, Jake Greasy Thumb Gusick and Scarface Al Capone. The largest group came from New York. Lucky Luciano, Frank Costello, Meyer Lansky, and Dutch Schultz all were there. New Jersey was represented by Longy's Willman. Business was conducted not in smoky back rooms, but on the boardwalk. Delegates were pushed along slowly in Atlantic City's famous rolling chairs. As they reached the end of the boardwalk, the gangsters removed their shoes and walked along the beach. The Atlantic City Press ran this photo of Nucky Johnson and Al Capone strolling the boardwalk. This headline showed that Capone was not exactly welcome. The gangsters apparently wanted the world to know about their peace conference. They summoned a UPI reporter to publish their compact. The 14-point plan was reprinted in the June 1929 issue of Literary Digest. All killings abolished and all machine guns relinquished under pain of extreme punishment. Capone's crime mentor, Johnny Torrio, comes out of retirement, rules as king and chief arbiter of all syndicate disputes. Past grievances are forgotten, including the St. Valentine's Day Massacre and hundreds of other killings in the past. But the main demand was that Capone take himself out of the limelight, and apparently he agreed. En route home to Chicago from Atlantic City, he arranged to have himself arrested in Philadelphia. He pleaded guilty to weapons charges, got a one-year sentence, and happily went to a Pennsylvania prison where he knew he'd be safe for a while. But the ceasefire they all agreed to did not last, and the bodies began to pile up once again. Longies Wilman, the New Jersey boss who organized that Atlantic City meeting, had a long and profitable crime career, but the tax man finally caught up with him in 1959. And in February of that year, he was found hanging in the basement of his West Orange home. There were reports that he had cancer and depression. There was also speculation that Zwillman was silenced to keep him from talking to the authorities. Thanks to Tim Stollery for digging up that story and sharing it with all of you.